um, if they're NASA certified. If they're NASA certified. Hi YouTube. Um, so today I wanted to talk about something that I felt like was very important, um, especially with the 2016 um, competition season coming up. Um, this is a topic that I think is crucial if you are looking to compete, whether it be a Europe a um, first time competitor or you um, have competed before, this is your second, third, even um, fourth season. Today's topic is things to look for in a coach. I might have to do a separate video on um, red flags when you're looking at a coach, um, so depending on how long this video is, um, it might include that or it might be a separate video. Um, so first off, you don't really need a coach. Um, there is plenty of free information online that you can research yourself. Um, this is huge if you're looking to cut costs, if you want to compete, and money is um, a big factor, which it, it should be. It's really expensive to compete. Um, but having a coach is really nice, especially if you are one that tends to have a lot of anxiety. They are an extra set of eyes, because um, I know, especially uh, if you've never competed before, but if you are getting down to those last few weeks, competitors would get this in their mind that we're not lean enough. Um, and you're just like, oh my gosh, I'm not gonna be ready. So it's nice to have someone who can tell you, no, you are, um, or we'll get you there. This is what you need to do. Um, so if you are looking to get a coach, um, there are, I think, about eight things that I think are really important for you to look for. The first thing to look for in a coach is their education, their training and nutrition credentials. Um, if they have gone to school, maybe they have a master's or a PhD in exercise science, um, maybe they're a nutritionist, um, but basically you wanna ask, are they qualified? Are they qualified to give you meal plans? Do they know what they're talking about with their training? Um, some people, especially online coaches and trainers, they claim to have all these certificates. Um, so if they say that they're NASA certified, look on their website, um, look them up by their name, see if they really are certified, if they have a certificate number. Because a lot of people say that they're qualified to give out nutrition plans and they have nothing to back that up. Maybe they've read a couple articles on the internet, that's it. Number two, uh, you want to figure out what their main priority is, what their number one priority is. And good coaches, their number one check priority should be your health. And not just your health, but your long-term health. Um, and this should be both mental and physical. Uh, if you are being put on, you know, ex very, very low calories for a long amount of time, for a prolonged amount of time, like, do they really have your best interest, your best, best health interest in mind? Or are they just concerned about a trophy that you might get um, because that helps their reputation or their team because you won first place? But if that sets you up for years of um, hormonal imbalances down the road or severe eating disorders, that they didn't have your best interest in mind. They were concerned about their wallets um, and how their team represents. So. A lot of coaches can also say this. They can say that, oh yeah, we're gonna figure our health first. Um, but you need to make sure that they're practicing what they preach. Um, you also wanna know like, if they take into consideration um, your post-show health and if they're gonna help you um, come out of a show. So number three would be the selection process that they have for potential clients. If you sign up with a potential coach and the first thing they ask for is your payment information and they want your credit card number um, or they start discussing payment that's the first thing they talk about is taking you on that's a huge red flag which I will talk to you later talk which I will talk to you about later um, but you want to see do they take on anyone and everyone if you inquire and they're quick without getting any information say yeah we can do a 12-week prep um, this isn't a good indicator. Um, you should have a coach who's going to ask you questions like what's your height, what's your weight, 
Um, what's your calorie intake like now? What's your cardio like? What's your training like? Um, you know, are you doing low calories, high um, cardio, and you're looking to do a show in 12 weeks? Um, you should have a coach who's asking you those type of questions because they're getting a better idea of where you're going to be to start this prep. Um, so if they give you a questionnaire or a survey to answer, that's a good sign. Um, you want to make sure that they're going to be honest with you and let you know if they do believe that you can do a prep if you're in the good start um, or if you're in a good place to start. If you're not, this coach might say, hey, you know, I would be willing to work with you um, if you wanted to do some sort of reverse first, if you wanted to work with me for three to four months before we consider a show. Um, that is a good sign, a good indicator of a good coach because they're looking for where you are currently and they're keeping your long-term um, health in mind. If you start off going into a prep starting at 12, 16 weeks and you're doing an hour of cardio a day at 1200 calories to maintain your current physique and you're trying to lose 10, 15 pounds, what do you think four weeks out of your show is going to look like? You're going to have to be doing two, three hours of cardio, eating like 800 calories if you want to lose weight and be ready for the stage. Um, so you should have a coach that inquires about your current nutrition and training. Number four is something to look for. Yes, I have, sorry, I have all my notes. I don't know if you can see because I'm trying not to ramble. Um, number four, you want to look at past client history. Um, this is really big. Um, not just how they do at shows, placings, because a lot of that is subjective. You don't know who showed up that day. Um, but look at how clients look they at show. You want to think, do I want to look like that? Is that something that I think I can achieve? Um, do I think that they come in conditioned? Do I think that they come in looking their best? Um, things like that. But also client testimonial. Um, you can reach out to past clients, current clients, ask them questions that, you know, how did you like your um, nutrition? How was training? What was peak week like? Peak week like? What was the day of show like? Um, what was the coach's best strength? Um, and the coach shouldn't be scared to have you reach out to clients because if anything, they should be helping you decide that, yeah, this is the coach for me. Um, but just to keep in mind that not all clients are gonna have an amazing experience with that said coach, and that's okay. Not everyone is gonna mesh perfectly with everyone, but you wanna have a majority of good stories, good testimonial towards that coach. Number five, um, this isn't always necessary, but experience as a competitor um, or experience as a coach. Just because someone hasn't competed before doesn't mean they can't be a great coach, but it's also nice to know that your coach has firsthand experience. They know what it's like to prep. They know what it's like to give up um, some of your social life. Um, they know what it's like during peak week, what it's like on show day. Also, what goes along with the experience is, you know, you want to see, are they a first-time competitor? Did they compete last year? and all of a sudden think that they can take on clients. Um, you know, that's probably not a great indicator that they're gonna be a good coach. Um, so you wanna see that they've been competing for a long time, they're certified, they have the correct education and background to be a coach. Um, number six I think is really important is response time. Um, I don't think that every coach should be required to get back to you within five minutes of a text or five minutes of an email. I would say um, 24 hours is a pretty good response time because um, people have a life outside of coaching. Um, I know that I have seen reviews of some coaches who don't respond within uh, 24 hours when their clients have to continue to pester them. Um, and you don't want to feel like you're annoying to your coach. Like you don't want to feel like if you have to ask a question that you're bothering them because you're paying for a service. and. You should be getting a good service. It's professional to get back to their clients within a reasonable amount of time. If they're not getting back to you in a timely manner and their responses are really short and they're not really answering your questions, that's a good indicator that you should move on and find a new coach. Number seven, uh, just something a little extra. You want to see um, what services that they offer. Do they offer nutrition and training, only training? Um, can they help with presentation? 
for day of? Will they help you with things like suit selection, makeup, hair, um, all those kind of little extra things? Posing is really big, so you want to make sure, okay, you found a coach, but does that mean I have to go out and find a posing coach? Am I doing things online, or am I going to do posing in person with someone uh, local, things like that? Um, I'm really lucky my coach was able to do the hair and makeup and my tan um, and was with me the day of my show. Um, so that was really big and that was something huge for me, um, especially with my first coach. Um, that was a big factor that I wanted someone there with me the day of the show. I think it's also important um, to do your research first. Um, and in, when you are considering a coach, just some questions that you should ask them. What is their training philosophy? What is their coaching philosophy? Um, are they individualizing their programs or are they just seem like they're very um, cookie cutter and someone who's 5'9", 160 pounds or someone who's 5'2", you know, 110 pounds, are their programs the same? Are they different? Um, that's kind of hard to, to see, but you can do some research online and see if um, anyone has made where you can see if there is any information online about that coach. Um, another thing that's important, are they um, clean eating, bro food, or are you going to be eating um, clean for 12 weeks, just tilapia, asparagus, sweet potato, rice, um, or are they do they implement IIFYM and flexible dieting? Um, if you believe in flexible dieting, you want to try to find a coach that believes in that too. Um, are they a big proponent of meal timing and that you should be eating meals one through six at specific times pre and post workout um, or did they give you a set of macros and you can use those however you want. Number two, one of the questions that I think you should ask is what is cardio and um, training going to look like? Uh, and of course this differs for everyone, not everyone's the same, they will respond differently but just to get a good idea, are you going to start off with fasted cardio? 12 weeks out, um, or is that something that the coach says, you know, this is a tool we're going to implement when we think we need to. I know that some coaches will start you off on an hour of cardio every single day at 12 weeks out. Um, so that's just my little rant there, just to get a good idea of what your training is going to be like for those next 12 weeks, because that's three months that you're going to be doing all this. Um, um, number three. It's a good idea to ask them um, how much money it's going to be for everything, um, what the, what your payment will go towards, what it will include if you're getting a meal plan, um, if you're getting macros, if you're getting um, training, and it's a good idea to put everything in writing like in an email to say, okay, I'm paying for X, Y, and Z, and it's going to be $800 for 12 weeks, um, something like that. Um, just so you can always refer back to that and if something isn't going right, you can say, hey, remember, you know, this is what we decided on. Um, just a good idea. Number four, um, to ask them, what's peak week going to be like? Can you give me an idea of what we're going to be doing? For example, do you use diuretics? Um, do you deplete water? Do you manipulate sodium? Things like that. Um, if they're, if they're doing something like really crazy and they're doing all these things and they implement, um, new substances into your diet at a week out, um, that's kind of a, a not a great indicator. Um, I will go into this later with the red flags and I probably interviewed like six or seven coaches before I finally decided on one. Um, when I asked a, a potential coach. I said, oh, do you use diuretics in peak week? And they said, yeah, we use diuretics for everyone. Um, which right there, you know, that's not individualized. They're saying that, yes, everyone needs to be on diuretics for peak week. Um, and that's something that I didn't want to do and I didn't believe in. Like, can you ask them, will I be eating the day of the show? <laughs> um, you will be surprised how many coaches will not let you eat or drink anything day of the show until you step off the stage after finals. Um, so for some shows that can be 9, 10, 11 o'clock at night and for you to not have anything to eat or drink is a little extreme. You don't want to be that girl passing out backstage because you're dehydrated and um, you don't have anything in your system so don't be that girl. I hope you found it informative. Um, 
I think it's really important that you find a right coach who's actually going to help you and puts your well-being first. That is just so important. Um, I want people to do preps and competitions a healthy way. Um, so if you liked it, um, please subscribe below, um, give it a thumbs up, and um, let me know um, any other topics or um, things that you'd like me to cover. Thanks.